In Terraria, you are able to find thousands of different items, some of which ended up being incredibly hard to get because of their low drop rates. But if you don't know what those items are, you may accidentally throw them away or never know how to even get them for yourself. That's why in today's video, we will be taking a look at the rarest items in Terraria. Before getting into this video, I need to quickly explain how I'll be ranking the items in the video. First off, we will be going off the drop rates for these items, along with two special rare items without drop rates. And secondly, while some items, like the lucky coin, will have multiple drop rates, I will still include them in this video if one of those drop rates is extremely low. But I'll still mention the other high drop rates alongside the rare drop rate. With that all out the way, let's get into it. For our first item in this video, we have one that most people think is pretty rare, but it actually has a decently high drop rate compared to other items we look at in this video, which is the Rod of Discord. This item has a 1 in 500 chance of dropping from Chaos Elementals, which are enemies with a low spawn rate, making the 1 in 500 chance of dropping a little bit harder than it seems from the outside. Luckily though, you are able to easily farm for the Rod of Discord using a farm, and on top of that, you're able to get the drop rate down to 1 in 400 if you're playing on the Celebration Secret Seed, making one of the most useful items in the game a little bit easier to obtain. For our next set of items, we will be looking at the items with a 1 in 1,000 chance to drop, which is the KO Cannon and the Pet Lizard. The KO Cannon is an item you will most likely have multiple of, so it may shock you that it has one of the lowest drop rates in the game, but there's a reason for that. The KO Cannon can drop from any enemy or NPC during the Blood Moon, meaning every time that event happens, everything you see will have the chance to drop it. And on top of that, you can get the drop rate up to 1 in 5 if you go after the clowns, so you tend to end up with a good bit of them. Besides that item though, the other 1 in 1000 drop rate item is the Pet Lizard, and it's not as easy to get. The Lizard Egg item can only drop from the flying snakes and lizard enemies in the Jungle Temple. So, if you wanted to get your hands on this item, you will most likely have to do some farming, or be extremely lucky the few times you need to be in the Jungle Temple. For our next item, we have another item which has a very low drop rate, but you probably have a good bit of, which is the Spiffo Pet. This red panda pet from Project Zomboid is summoned using the Spiffo Plush, which only has a 1 in 1500 chance to drop from zombie enemies. While this may seem super rare because of its drop rate, since it's able to drop from almost any zombie in the game, you will almost for sure get at least one throughout your normal playthrough of the game. For our next set of items, we will be looking at the ones that have a 1 in 2,000 chance of dropping, which actually has the most amount of items in this list. To start, we have both the Bladed Glove and Bloody Machete, which each will drop from enemies with these specific stats during the Halloween seasonal event. Meaning, outside of luck, if you wanted one of these weapons, you would have to do some research into every Halloween enemy. Moving on from the Halloween season and into the Pirate Invasion, we have the Discount Card. This is an item that will cut the cost of items that NPCs are selling, making it extremely useful, but it only has a 1 in 2,000 chance to drop from normal enemies. While that may seem bad, luckily, you're able to get a better drop rate for it, depending on the specific pirate enemy, which can get as low as a 1 in 100 chance of happening. After that, we have the Pirate Staff, which is, of course, another item from the Pirate Invasion, and just like the last item, you are luckily able to get a better drop rate, but unlike the last item, it's only from one enemy, which is the Flying Dutchman, which has a 1 in 100 chance to drop it. And finally, for our last 1 in 2,000 drop rate item, we have the Money Trough, which actually has a normal drop rate of 1 in 200 from enemies in the Blood Moon, but you can actually have it drop from the statues of those enemies. Just the odds of happening jump up to 1 in 2,000, earning it its spot on this list. Next up, we have two items that have two different drop rates, one of which is double of the others, but they're from the same event, so I decided to group them together. The first item in this section has a drop rate of 1 in 4,000, which is the Lucky Coin. This is an item that will drop from enemies in the Pirate Invasion, and it will make enemies drop coins when damaged, making it pretty useful. Although this item can be rare, luckily, just like the other Pirate Invasion themed items, you're usually able to get better drop rates from specific pirate enemies. And with the Lucky Coin, you're able to get its drop rate down to 1 in 200 from the Flying Dutchman. Moving on to the second item in this section, we have the Coin Gun, which has a 1 in 8,000 chance of dropping from enemies in the Pirate Invasion. Just like the name implies, this is a weapon that you use coins as the ammo for, and it's a pretty solid weapon, but expensive at the same time. This is again another item that you're able to get drop rates for depending on the specific enemy, with you being able to get the Coin Gun's drop rate down to 1 in 400 with the Flying Dutchman. 
Moving on to the next item now, we are finally in the 1 in 10,000 drop rates, of which there happen to be 3 items. The first item is, of course, the Slime Staff, which is a summoning weapon that has a low chance to drop from slimes. But with slimes being one of the most common enemies, the Slime Staff being able to drop from slime statues, the princess selling it on the Celebration Secret Seed, and it also having a 1 in 70 chance of dropping from pinky slimes, you could also argue that it's not rare at all. But because of its drop rate, I felt the need to include it anyway. Next up, we have the Pet Dinosaur, which is summoned using the Amber Mosquito. This is a pet that has a pretty low drop rate of 1 in 10,000, but since it only has the chance to drop while putting blocks into the Extractinator, you tend to be able to easily get this item after doing a bit of prep work, like collecting a lot of silt or slush. And finally, for the last item in this section, we actually have a pet that is one of the first things you're able to get in your world, which is the Sugar Glider Pet. This is a pet that's summoned using the Eucalyptus Sap, which has a 1 in 10,000 chance to drop from trees when shaking them. While this may seem like an item you'd have a good chance of getting, given the fact you rarely need to cut wood down past a certain point in the game, I'd say a good number of you out there don't have this pet. And unlike the past few items, there are no ways to get a better drop rate for it. And finally, in our final section in this video, we have two pets which don't have a drop rate at all, and instead will only have a limited amount per world, which is the Dirt Block and Caveling Gardener pets. Starting with arguably the easier of the two, the Caveling Gardener pet, which is a part of the Core Keeper crossover we got in the 1.4.4 update. This blue cat-like pet is summoned using the Glow Tulip, which you can find randomly underground but only a small amount will spawn in each world, with small worlds getting two, medium-sized worlds getting four, and finally, large worlds getting a total of six. While that will make it pretty hard to find, luckily, we know exactly how it can spawn, so you can know where to look for it and where not to. And finally, moving on to what I consider to be the rarest item in the game, we have a pet dirt block. Just like the name implies, this is just a pet that looks exactly like a dirt block, and is even summoned using a dirt block, but getting your hands on it isn't so easy. Just like the Cavelin Gardener, only a certain amount of dirt block pets will spawn in a world, with small worlds getting 3, medium sized worlds getting 6, and finally 9 in large worlds. But that's where the similarities with the Cavelin Gardener end. Unlike the Glow Tulip, which is very noticeable, the Dirt Block Pet will randomly replace dirt blocks in your world, and the appearance of those blocks won't change at all. This means, on top of already being hard to spot, there's also a good chance that you'll throw it away without actually looking at it, since that's what you do with dirt most of the time. Another thing that makes this harder compared to the Cavelin Gardener is the fact we don't know exactly how it spawns in, other than it being in dirt. So, if you want to get your hands on a dirt block pet, you will most likely have to destroy a good bit of your world before ever finding a single one! That wraps up our look into the current rarest items in Terraria. If you made it this far into the video, be sure to let me know by commenting dirt block, and also let me know what items you tend to have the hardest time getting. Thanks for sticking to the end. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And as always, make sure to have a wonderful day.